Rutgers people. They're actors and activists, scholars and scientists, trailblazers, leaders. And they've been changing the world since before the United States was a nation. It's hard to imagine now, but the first Rutgers students were the revolutionaries who fought for America's independence. Rutgers was founded in 1766 as Queens College, and 10 years later, just days before the signing of the Declaration, classes were suspended when the British fleet arrived at Sandy Hook. The students left. They went off to war. One of those early Rutgers students was a 19-year-old named Simeon DeWitt. DeWitt was a brilliant surveyor and mapmaker. By the time he was 24, he was George Washington's geographer. He made General Washington's map to Yorktown, the last major battle of the war. But Simeon DeWitt did something else truly remarkable, and it is recognized by people around the world. DeWitt and two colleagues designed the street grid for Manhattan. It was a visionary act of urban planning, and it shaped the city's identity ever since. I'm an urban planner, and my work is all about taking patches of the New York City grid and turning them into public plazas. There's something uniquely democratic about the grid and its ability for newcomers to get the city's geography quickly and easily. That I graduated from Rutgers, the same university as Simeon DeWitt, and now have the chance to shape his work for the 21st century, just feels really special. You cannot overstate the impact Simon Waxman had on human health. This is the man who coined the term antibiotics. Waxman received two degrees from Rutgers. He returned as a member of the faculty. When Waxman's research was conducted, tuberculosis was regarded as one of the worst pathogens in human history. The discovery of streptomycin by Waxman and his graduate student Albert Schatz led to the first effective cure for tuberculosis. I met Simon Waxman once when I was a student attending a conference in Germany with Nobel laureates. I would have never imagined that I would become director of the Rutgers Institute that he founded. My work in molecular genetics helped lay the foundation for the biotechnology revolution that's essential to our understanding of the genetic blueprint of animals, plants, and microbes. In that way, I see my work and that of the Institute as carrying on Waxman's legacy of saving lives and serving humanity. When you look at Paul Robeson's legacy, it just leaves you in awe. Here is the son of a former slave who came to Rutgers, excelled as a scholar, athlete, and graduated Phi Beta Kappa. Then he went on to earn a law degree while playing professional football. But Robeson really found his voice in the theater. He was an international sensation, someone who took real risks in his career. Paul Robeson was a trailblazer on the stage and in films, and he used his fame to fight injustice. We have seen that people will so fight for their freedom that if it is not given to them, they will take it. He stands out as an example of that revolutionary spirit that makes our university and our country so great. As a Latina and as a journalist, I aspire to be that same kind of groundbreaker to help overcome stereotypes. You know, there aren't a lot of us on the air, and I know that along with the success comes the tremendous responsibility to be that role model to help push boundaries and to inspire others to do the same. When we talk about free markets and individual responsibility, we're often talking about the groundbreaking work of one man, economist Milton Friedman. Friedman was a Rutgers student in the 1930s. He won the Nobel Prize in 1976, and now he's acknowledged to be one of the great economic thinkers of all time. Like Milton Friedman, I feel fortunate to have studied economics at Rutgers University. I know the power of free markets. I see it every day. I believe in a meritocracy in empowering people, in getting out of their way and giving them the opportunity to succeed. Milton Friedman's ideas remain relevant and powerful. Their influence has been experienced by just about everyone. Pretty much everyone has seen a George Siegel sculpture. 
His work isn't just in museums. It's on Christopher Street in New York. It's at the Franklin Roosevelt Memorial in Washington. It's in London, in Seoul, South Korea. Siegel revolutionized the art of sculpture. He took on social issues and made them central to his art. You don't just look at a Siegel installation, you're invited to walk within it and experience it on a personal level. George Siegel earned his MFA degree from Rutgers in 1963, and he broke all the rules of fine art at the time. As an artist, there's so much inspiration I take from that. I'm trying to move beyond the typical idea of a painting. I want my paintings to be viewed in a gallery, but I'm also animating and projecting them, so people are interacting with my work rather than simply looking at it. Like Siegel, I'm inviting people to engage with my art, to be a part of it and to use it as an opportunity to reflect on the human condition. The ability to inspire does not just happen. Not in the army, not in the law, not in life. I became a soldier when one of my professors at Rutgers suggested I join the army. I had never thought about a career in the military, but I took that leap. Now I am the Judge Advocate General of the Army. I have the honor to be part of a team that accomplishes extraordinary things. We work every day to make a difference in the world on behalf of the American people. And I got that start, an opportunity, at Rutgers. Rutgers helped set me on the path, in leadership, in the law, and in life. She's an inspiration, a true leader, someone who has taken her military experience and Rutgers education to new heights. Like Lieutenant General Darpino, I served in the Army. I was wounded in Iraq and awarded the Purple Heart. Coming to college was pretty challenging for me. It was hard to relate to people who hadn't had the same experiences. Then I realized I wasn't alone. I worked with other veterans at Rutgers to give us a greater voice on campus. Now, Rutgers is known as a leader in easing the transition of veterans to college life. Leadership doesn't just happen. You need people who care, people who are committed, and a place like Rutgers to make it happen. I had the great good fortune to serve on the Rutgers faculty from 1963 to 1972. In 1969, several students asked if the school could offer a seminar on women and the law. I headed to the library. There was precious little about women's place in a world where all doers and actors were male. Rutgers students sparked my interest and aided in charting the course I then pursued. Less than three years after starting the seminar, I was arguing gender discrimination cases before the Supreme Court. Through the years, Rutgers has remained steadfast in its commitment to diversity, advancing opportunities for people long left out to aspire and achieve. Justice Ginsburg, what she's done in her life is just amazing. And she was at Rutgers during amazing times. In 1969, a group of students took over Conklin Hall. They got to the roof and hung a banner, Liberation Hall. Back then, there were hardly any black students here. They wanted to change that. At a time when a lot of other campus protests ended violently, this one ended peacefully, and it changed Rutgers forever. Now Rutgers is a different place. It's vibrant, it's diverse, and it's engaged with its communities. I come from a multicultural family. You get us together and no two people look alike. I love that. And that's what Rutgers is like. This university is diverse. It's real. It's exciting and colorful and alive. And it really prepares you for life. I took a leadership course and it changed my life. It made me realize you really can do anything. It's up to you. So I started a nonprofit, and now we host open mic nights to raise money and pack up lunches for the homeless. That opportunity, that spirit, that is Rutgers. And it always has been.
This is a place with history. Rutgers was founded in 1766 by revolutionary thinkers in revolutionary times. 250 years later, Rutgers people are still making a difference. They're still coming up with revolutionary ideas and changing the world. And it all starts here. Rutgers really is the best thing that ever happened to me, to all of us. Rutgers. 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 Revolutionary. 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 Revolutionary for 250 years. <laughs>